Welcome back to Next Gen Console Watch, our show following everything happening with the latest video game hardware. I'm Jim Hatfield, and as always, I'm joined by Max Scoville, host of IGN's PlayStation Podcast, Podcast Beyond. Hey. And Ryan McCaffrey, host of IGN's Xbox Podcast, Podcast Unlocked. I'm just happy to be here this week in a Max Scoville-centric PlayStation Showcase week. Oh, shucks. We do, have, we do have a lot of PlayStation uh, announcements to discuss this week, but I definitely want to get your perspective on all of that too as well, Ryan. So yeah, this week we had a big PlayStation Showcase. Uh, a long extended gameplay demo for Spider-Man 2. Sony revealed new hardware, a new streaming handheld device. There are a lot of games in this hour-long showcase. Maybe not that many first-party PlayStation Studios games, but a lot of games. So, Max, I want to get your thoughts first. What's the point of these showcases? It's to get people excited about all the games that are coming down the PlayStation pipeline. People who already have PS5s, they're going to start uh, setting dollars aside in their minds for all the games they're going to buy. And for people who don't have a PS5, well, maybe they'll be enticed to buy one in the future. So, from that perspective, was this week's showcase successful for Sony? I think so. You know, I think it's easy to sort of zero in on little parts of it and, and nitpick about them. But overall, it was you know, an hour and change of just nonstop game stuff reveals. I mean, it was a handful of things we'd seen before, handful of things that were sort of, you know, previously existed. Not all of it was completely, you know, mind-blowing, but a lot of it was really cool. And a lot of it was sort of a nice, you know, vote of confidence for anybody who dropped a, you know, handful of cash on a, on a new PS5 or anybody who's maybe considering grabbing one. There's a, you know, pretty good incentive to do so. Uh, I think ending on Spider-Man 2 was a, was a very good, very good move there. Uh, you know, we still don't have a hard release date for that, but fall sounds promising. We've got, you know, a, a, a game and a, a smaller game that Insomniac's already made with uh, Spider-Man, and we, we know that they're capable of doing something incredible with that. Uh, it's not just BS. Uh, so, you know, I think that's going to be one of the coolest games of the year, and this is a really good year for games. So that's a, one hell of a PlayStation exclusive to show off. We'll, we'll dive into the, the specifics in just a moment, but Ryan, what was your sort of immediate reaction coming out of the showcase? Uh, that Spider-Man definitely helped a hell of a lot. Like that, I think it was, but like I'll say this, Sony has set, they've managed to set a pretty high bar for these over the years where they've <laughs> generally done a great job, however they've done it, whether it's showing gameplay, whether it's just doing a cool CG trailer, they've, they've managed to hit a pretty high bar with these. And I think this one wasn't hitting that bar uh, and I still think it didn't overall, again, by, by the high standard that they themselves have set. Spider-Man went a long way towards helping, but Damon, you mentioned the top first party. Where was The Last of Us multiplayer? I mean, Wolverine, mm -hmm. okay, I think we talked about on last week's show. We were not surprised that that's uh, not being shown yet. I think as Max had very wisely pointed out, it's they're going to give Spider-Man uh, the time in the, in the sun uh, as far as the Marvel stuff uh, first before they pivot to, to Wolverine. But yeah, it was a lot of smaller games uh, that, hey, they look great, don't get me wrong, uh, but those games, like at, at these events, and I think, Max, do we agree that this was, for all intents and purposes, Sony's E3 showcase? Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. So by, by that standard, uh, you know, the, the audience, I think, is this, they're expecting, like, this isn't a state of play. This was a PlayStation showcase, mm -hmm. and I think the, the PlayStation audience was, Kind of expecting and hoping for more, so I don't I don't think it was one of their best, but that's not to say it was bad. Speaking of Spider-Man 2, I thought that game looked incredible. Uh, I was surprised though that they still didn't give us a release date. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be this fall. We know that Starfield's coming in September. There have been some rumblings about Spider-Man coming in September as well, but now we still don't know exactly when we're going to play that. Max, was that, was that a surprise for you? Very weird. I thought that was going to be the the sort of big thing that just put a button on it all, but. Uh... Yeah. yeah, that was, I mean, to say just fall is like, oh, okay, thanks, I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, my best hope there is that they just want to be absolutely positive that it's ready to go and isn't, you know, isn't shipping in any state of disrepair because we've, you know, we've seen some games recently not exactly stick yeah. the landing and, uh, you know, Spider-Man isn't exactly known for falling on his ass. So I think that's got to be <laughs> a smooth landing. Yeah, I know that's a very important game for them. Uh, let's talk about this new hardware, the Project Q device, a streaming handheld. Doesn't play games natively. It has to stream games from your PlayStation 5. The games actually have to be installed on your PS5. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what to make of this. It's a little bit strange, right? And we, this isn't, we had rumors that this was coming. Now it's official. It's for people to play their PS5 games on a handheld probably relatively close to their PS5 console. Is that right? Over Wi-Fi. That's, yeah, that's my understanding. I think you, you can theoretically you know, use Wi-Fi elsewhere, but... I, 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 this is, it's not a 
strictly dedicated, you know, cloud streaming device. It's not a dedicated handheld. Uh, it's it's is definitely one of Sony's weirder little products. It doesn't even look particularly uh, well designed. I mean, it's you know, it clearly is functional, but it looks like they cut a dual sense in half and jammed a tablet in the middle. Which, mm. I mean. Yeah, pretty much. I think you nailed it. Yeah, it's it's an odd choice. I mean, I, I heard someone say, oh, it's great if, you know, one person wants to watch TV and another person wants to play a game. And it's like, yeah, but they already have, you know, the backbone that's officially Sony branded that you just plop mm -hmm. your phone in and then use the PlayStation app to do the remote play thing from that. You know, that's also, you can just, you know, link your DualSense with a laptop and do it through that too. Like, it's just, it, it's a, who is this for? It seems like a very odd product. Like, if you, you and your whoever housemate are fighting over the TV that much, it's probably just as cheap to buy another TV than it is to get a dedicated, specifically PlayStation branding, you know, remote play handheld. Yeah, we don't, we don't have the price on it. Don't know exactly when it'll be released, but I don't know, it would seem to me, it, the price has to be fairly low. I mean, I don't know how reasonable that is from like a, like a, a components uh, stance, but like who's gonna pay more than like 100, 150 bucks? For yeah, I mean, this, a, Ryan, is this a, a puzzle to you the, as well? The Dual Sense is what seventy, right? Yeah. To buy, so it's yeah. a, it's a Dual Sense with a little tiny. Oh, I wasn't sure. So it is like the t the screen is part of it, or is that was that meant to be like just a phone? That's part of it. It is part. Okay, they already make a thing yeah. that you can right. jam your phone into. Okay, so yeah, mm. I, I mean, it's I guess it's been long enough since Sony made a handheld device that that confused that nobody was quite sure of its place in the market. So it was time for another one. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not sure what this, how this sort of helps or complements the PlayStation ecosystem. Like in all seriousness, I don't really know how this, like where this fits into the PlayStation. So you know ecosystem. the Wii U. Yeah. What I if try Wii, not to? What I if the Wii remember, U but. didn't have any special functionality on the gamepad and was <laughs> just a second screen that you could use with the, with the device? Yeah. Eh? I don't know. I don't eh? know. Uh, uh, I'm not, you know. Okay, but yeah, you're Damon. You're absolutely right about the price. I mean, it's got to be, I mean, it's got to be a very competitively priced for it to be to have any yeah. chance of of being something that that the average PlayStation Five owner is, is willing to pick up. Yeah. Um, going into the conference or the showcase, uh, there were a lot of rumors about, about a Metal Gear Solid Three remake. Those turned out to be true. Just some questions. Uh, I, I think on one hand, it's very exciting. I, this is a Metal Gear Solid game that I haven't ever played, and by all intents and purposes, it's, a, it's supposed to be very, very good. So I welcome the opportunity to experience it in a modern sense. There have been great remakes lately, like Resident Evil 4 and Dead Space, so uh, I'm excited on, on that front. But it's unclear to me who is making this game, because no, no like external developer has been revealed for it. If it's Konami, I just I don't know how that's possible, the Konami of today, because the last big AAA game like this Konami shipped was Metal Gear Survive in 2018. Since then, they've been doing their Castlevania collections, their Contra collections, they did the Cowabunga collection last summer, but they farm those out to places like Digital Eclipse, so I don't know. <laughs> it's like, is, the, is it the Metal Gear Survive team making this, or has Konami oh. been quietly it's hiring? <laughs> It's clear who isn't making this, and that's yes. Hideo Kojima. Yeah, that's true. That divorce was yeah. bitter and final. So, I mean, we all know that's a that's a whole big, very publicized thing. You know, Jeff Keighley yeah. went out in the Game Awards a million years ago and said Konami wouldn't let Kojima come here tonight to accept his award. Uh, so I, that's probably why they didn't, you know, reveal this on the Summer Games Fest. But also, uh, you know, they, the official Metal Gear account tweeted out a statement saying, you know, this is what this is, blah blah blah. Signed. Development team. The, the and, development team. And Keely's like, who is development team? <laughs> it's yeah. Like, oh, okay. But no, it's it's it kind of baffling. I can't help but feel like any <clears throat> whatever development team steps up and admits that they're doing it would kind of seem like they're sort of scabs, so to speak. Um, you know, they're they're hmm. doing doing something that's. They, I mean, it's a it's a it's a controversial thing. You know, it's a beloved game, but to sort of go ahead and and remake it without the blessing of a, the creator, who's still very much active in the gaming industry, is sort of a hmm. you know it's shaky situation uh also as far as a game reveal goes i love this game it's awesome damon it's a great one to start with highly recommend it not my personal favorite but i think maybe the best in the series uh a long cg trailer that ends with just cg seems like it, again it's a it's a remake of a game that thoroughly exists has already been remastered once looks great in that version and they're also re-releasing that for for modern hardware but like mm. to not have anything aside from they have like four four screenshots that look very much like in-engine renders 
Uh, I think when it's a known quantity, you got to show off a little bit more, you know, and that's sort of my, that's my hesitation with this one. Same deal with the, with the KOTOR remake where we got a very cool CG trailer, but then radio yep. silence since then. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's coming yeah, to I'm, Xbox at least, by the way, just in case anybody I was, was curious. Say, yeah. yeah. That like, uh, like several of the games that are shown off are also coming to Xbox, uh, including Marathon from Bungie, the first New game, full new game from Bungie since uh, Destiny, but of course Marathon being what the first game I believe that that Bungie created Bungie's way back in the game. day. That's right. Yeah. This one's not a sequel though. This one is a PvP only uh, multiplayer game. But I don't know. Are we, are we surprised to see it coming also to Xbox? Because of course uh, Sony owns Bungie now. And well, if you look at similar situations with you know Xbox acquiring Bethesda, you know. Uh, Deathloop was, you know, came to PS5 and Ghostwire Tokyo, but now, you know, Redfall, the the new game, the new IP, is Xbox exclusive. I don't know, Ryan, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, not a surprise, only because when the acquisition happened, they were explicitly clear. Bungie wants to keep putting things out on all platforms because, of course, they've got I these see. giant shared world uh, live service games. They need the 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 biggest player base possible to generate a ton more revenue and, and have a you know, better player experience. So yeah, we knew that any and all future Bungie games were still gonna be coming to Xbox. So yeah, this is, uh, this is the, you know, you, you cited a couple of examples where it went the other way, Damon. Uh, this is the first time that, uh, that, that Sony <laughs> is, <laughs> is having it where, yeah, Marathon, we own Bungie, here you go. And Xbox gamers yeah. can go, yeah, looking forward to playing that on my Series X or Series Y whenever the game comes out. Yeah. It's going to be really funny if that comes to everything but Apple, which is what the original Marathon. Oh. I mean, it's funny because, yeah. like, you know, Bungie's, it was a Mac game. Yeah, yeah. Bungie started out as like, they were the guys, they made Mac games, they made cool Mac games, and then they got scooped up by Microsoft, and they were like the, yep. you know, they were Master Chief, they were the House of Halo, and then, uh, you know, then they went solo, and they did Destiny, then they got scooped up by Sony, and so now they're making, the uh, remaking the original Apple game, but it's going to be available on Xbox, even though they're a Sony company. Yeah. Some shrewd business yeah. folks over there, they have... They've been with well, all these companies and made literally billions of dollars in the process. Why I call them Bungie? They stretch every which way. <laughs> stretch the bank account. <laughs> add yeah. some zeros on that thing. Uh, well, speaking of multiplayer games from the showcase, there's also Fair Games. I hope you noticed I pronounced that with the dollar sign. That's the first game from Haven, which is Jade Raymond's new studio, which is uh, a PlayStation studio. Um, seems to be a multiplayer heist game. Modern day Robin Hood stealing from the rich, that sort of thing. Um, I don't know, is, it, is this sort of surprising you? Just from like, you know, Jade Raymond, of course, uh, helped create and launch the original Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this was a kind of cool thing to see out the gate. I like the, I like the visuals a lot. I also thought it was a game that had already been announced. I thought it was Hyenas, which is in the works from mm -hmm. Creative Assembly, which is also a game about teams going in and heisting stuff from rich people in a bleak post-capitalist neon colored cyberpunk future. And, and until the sci-fi elements kind of kicked in, I literally thought this was the gonna be the a first trailer, first full trailer for Payday 3, which, cause we just got a big <clears> teaser <throat> for that, which did millions of views. The, oh, okay, here's more pay, oh. Oh, it's not, okay. <laughs> so yeah, um, I mean, it is, it's not surprising in the sense that uh, Sony has straight up told us we're gonna be doing more multiplayer games. Yeah, the, the, right. the company that has built its entire reputation <laughs> off of making these top shelf single player narrative games is, uh, is like, we're gonna make some multiplayer stuff now because of course there's, there's a lot of money to be made, a lot more money theoretically than can be made uh, with those single player games. So yeah, not, I, not what I would have necessarily expected from Jade Raymond, uh, given again, as you mentioned her past, but we'll see. I mean, multiplayer is such a tough space because you can be good and still not be able to edge out the popular thing because there's only, you know, people can only have Usually one, maybe you've got a second game that you play on a, a multiplayer, you know, ongoing live service game that you play on a regular basis. So yeah, it's, uh, but it's got the backing of Sony as a first party game. So it'll have uh, as good a chance as anything at, at muscling into that if it's, if it's got the quality to match. As expected, Sony showed off a few PSVR 2 games and one of them that's exclusive to PSVR 2 is Resident Evil 4. It's gonna be free DLC on PS5, exclusive to PSVR 2, so. I don't know, I think that was uh, interesting. Maybe, Max, do you think that could maybe, uh, you know, 
we got, I guess we got some news this week that the PSVR 2 headset is actually maybe selling better than we originally thought. Mm -hmm. It needs a stronger library, though, and I think maybe that, you know, uh, a very well-received uh, game like Resident Evil 4, having its PSVR mode being exclusive to PSVR 2, that could be a boon for Sony, well, you think? Sort of, because the the hmm. you know the v they already had PlayStation VR not the they had the the Quest VR had the original Resident Evil Four on it in VR you know it, it's uh, the old okay. game yeah yeah so gotcha, like if you yeah. want to play Resident Evil Four in VR you can do that right now it's just not going to be the shiny new remake version but gotcha it's and again it's this is uh, this looks really cool I have the utmost faith that Capcom mm -hmm. can pull it off they have done this two times already uh, I guess three if you count the RE4 Quest version uh, I loved RE4 mm -hmm. remake phenomenal but it's I don't think it's enough of a new thing to be like, I'm going to go out and buy a PSVR 2. Mm. Uh, I think, I mean, the, the, the VR component for uh, RE7 was announced alongside the game pretty much. I yeah, that was yeah. a day and date thing, I think. Yeah, and it was, it? I mean, you, you get the game day one, you've got your VR set up, you hop right in there. I think that's how it was. And in this case, it's like uh, the game came out a while ago. People have already been, you know, playing it a whole bunch. Great game. Very cool. Uh, you know, I think it's more of a novelty than like a, a system seller at this point. Then again, there's yeah. still people who haven't gone out and bought uh, PS5s yet. So maybe they'll, that'll be like, this is, this is going to make me, you know, grab a PS5 and a PSVR and experience it the scariest way possible. Well, you know what wasn't there, Damon? <laughs> Was half -Life yes, Alex. I do know. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yep. yeah, I'm officially like I'm done. Like I know we're it's weird to think like we're only three months into the PSVR 2's life cycle, but I just feel like if if that was going to get announced, if that was going to happen, it would have happened by now because it's already a three year old game, right? Yeah. From the PC, yeah. so I'm 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 giving it up with with Alex. I mean, I'm I feel just very fortunate to have played it on the mm -hmm. on the Valve Index on my PC. But I just, I, the reason I, that we kept harping on this, I just wanted more people yeah, to be able to play right. what, again, what I personally think is, and, and for me, it's the best game of the last five years. I know there are plenty of people that would el go Elden Ring, go this or that, but Alex is that good. I just wanted more people to mm -hmm. be able to play it. That's all I wanted. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure Val yeah. feels the same way. Uh, I, so in, in PSVR 2's defense, which is not something I, I say a whole lot, the fact that it is selling this well compared to the PSVR 1, at this point, it's his life cycle. It's really, it's really cool. That's very exciting. Also, especially considering it hasn't been in stores up until very recently. That's very true. And that's also factoring in the supply shortages for the PS5 itself. Yeah. Like, up until very recently, it was, it was much more difficult to get a hold of either of these things. And now it is, I think they're just now starting to show up on yeah. shelves. So, you know, maybe what they showed off today was enough to pique people's interest and have them, I mean, like, you know, yeah. Arizona Sunshine 2 looked fun. That just looked like a mm -hmm. fun time in VR uh, yeah. You mentioned Resident Evil for VR mode. That that looks pretty pretty cool, but we're still we we we're waiting for first party to show up. This was yeah. The PSVR this wasn't a party. first party party for sure. Yeah, I mean was... you're right at all. Even so, you know we've we got Horizon Call the Mountain, uh, but none of the other first parties have shown up yet, and that's obviously where not, so much talent is not even any like notable third parties like we don't have there's not much triple a stuff on psvr 2 which is really odd especially compared to psvr 1 like there was a yeah. lot you know we had we had final fantasy and, and arkham on there like yeah. there was star wars battlefront there were there were recognizable brands attached to vr and you know i get if sony doesn't want to throw first party stuff at that like you'd think that they would maybe throw some cash towards you know developers elsewhere and be like hey get your get your thing on our device but i don't know maybe it's just it's diminishing returns or something but yeah i mean arizona sunshine looks really cool the games they showed off look look you know they look exciting but they're also uh if you're not already into vr i don't think that would necessarily get your attention yeah i think you're probably right about that well immediately following the playstation showcase xbox tweeted out an image of all the games that are also coming to xbox a very very cheeky timing it looks like there are uh 12 of the games that are shown off today are coming to xbox including immortals Ghost Runner 2, Marathon, Metal Gear Solid Delta, Dragon's Dogma 2, Alan Wake 2, which we've got a release date for him, uh, The Plucky Squire, Teardown, which looks really fun. I know we were talking about that before we started filming here. That, I, I totally want to play that game. Assassin's Creed Mirage, Neva, Cat Quest, and uh, The Talos Principle 2. So, a lot of games are not going to be exclusive to PlayStation. Seems like uh, kicking off our, our, our summer, summer of gaming, summer event season here, the PlayStation Showcase is a good one. Maybe not one of the all-time great PlayStation Showcases, but a solid effort. And, uh, you know, obviously, the PlayStation business is doing just fine these days. And everyone's going to have Spider-Man 2 to play this fall. Definitely something big to look forward to. We had the results of the poll from last episode. We asked, what is the upcoming game 
you're most excited about. And uh, perhaps, unsurprisingly, Spider-Man 2 is at number one, 32% of the vote. But Ryan, that's very closely followed by Starfield with 28%. So these, yeah. it's like this. It's like this Spider-Man and Starfield. They're both going to be awesome. Um, I, yeah. I hope that the fact that Spider-Man 2 didn't get that expected September release date, just I'm being totally selfish here, Hopefully it means it's out later in the fall so that I don't have to try and juggle both Spider-Man yeah. 2 and Starfield at, at literally the same time. Like, give me some Starfield time and then maybe uh, maybe we get Spider-Man 2 a little later. I, I would not be opposed to that. And then we got a poll for you to vote on for next episode. It's similar, but now that we've, we have an updated list of games coming out of the PlayStation Showcase, what was your highlight from the PlayStation Showcase this week? Spider-Man 2, Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake, uh, the Project Q handheld, Marathon, Dragon's Dogma 2, or something else entirely. Make sure to vote at IGN.com the day that this episode goes live, and we'll share the results with you next week. And that's going to do it for this edition of Next Gen Console Watch. Thank you to both Max and Ryan. Thank you to everyone working behind the scenes in our LA and SF studios to make this episode possible. My name is Damon, and we'll be back next week with more Next Gen Hardware News. We'll see you then.